Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. Our speaker is Craig Peloquin. Craig was a musician and clown for nearly a decade in his late teens and early 20s. In his mid-twenties, he was working between 80 and 100 hours a week as a full-time magician, clown, magic shop owner, and part-time kindergarten teacher. He has earned millions of dollars in direct sales since 1995, and he will now share with you how he did it. Vancouver Business Network friends and most welcome guests, let's put our hands together and give Craig Peliquin a warm, warm BBN welcome. Thank you, Roger. Hey, everybody, uh, welcome. Uh, you shouldn't have any difficulty hearing me. Uh, as you heard, I did have a background uh, in uh, being up on stage. And uh, we're going to be talking today uh, about my small business profitability secrets. So, what if there was a button that you could push to help you increase? your sales. So a little bit about my background. Um, I am the North American uh, Director uh, of Operations for uh, Small Business Dream and Metropoly. And we are the number one global small business profitability experts. I am the author of the book, Boost Your Business with LinkedIn, and I'll be sharing some uh, things about that uh, today. I am a former children's entertainer and kindergarten teacher. And I have uh, been a million dollar earner in the direct selling industry, uh, specifically in uh, network marketing. So raise your hand if you can tell me who this is a picture of. Just raise your hand if anybody knows. You can yell it out loud. Who is this? Everybody know? Anybody know? Say it out loud. Martin Luther King Jr. Does anybody know from his famous speech? What was his famous speech? The first line of his speech? I have, I have a dream. That is correct. Well, I had a dream too. We've all had a dream. I had a dream back in uh, school uh, to not be bullied. Uh, I skipped the grade. Uh, raise your hand if you know somebody that ever skipped the grade or was bullied in school. Anybody know anybody who's bullied? You know, it's, it's a tough thing to go through. We see a lot of uh, things happening now uh, today with anti-bullying campaigns. Um, I was actually one of those kids that was actually locked in a locker. And it's a pretty scary experience. And I still deal with a lot of that today. Uh, we see things that uh, bring out uh, where you are for what's happened to you in the past. Well, I had a dream. My dream was not to be bullied when I went to school to get through it without being picked on. Uh, then early in the 80s, uh, this is a picture of somebody you may recognize. Anybody recognize? Raise your hand if you recognize who this famous magician might be. If you know his name, say it out loud. David David, thank you, David Copperfield. And uh, you can see there's a picture of something on this. He made the Statue of Liberty disappear. Raise your hand if you remember the special when David Copperfield made the Statue of Liberty disappear. Well, I saw this on television. I thought, I want to be a magician. That this would help me get rid of the bullies. So I started getting books from the library. And this is me. <laughs> this would have been in the 80s. Yes. Um, I haven't aged a bit, <laughs> still look the same. And uh, this is what stopped me from, from bullying. I found out that my dream was to become a professional magician. And I started doing that. And in 1985 and 86, I became Vancouver's Children's Magician of the Year, Junior Magician of the Year. And it came to the point where I got a phone call in grade 12. I got a really interesting phone call that I thought was a crank call. It was from a company called Palmer Jarvis Advertising. And the person on the phone said, hi, this is Max Meyer. And I'm from Palmer Jarvis Advertising. I'm looking for Craig Peliquin. So that's me. Because we would like to interview you for the position of Ronald McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I said. I, I thought it was my friends. They were punking me. This has got to be a joke. Turned out they had the contract for McDonald's. And it was real. They wanted me to audition for this job. But to do it and to become Ronald McDonald, I had to go to school. I had to learn how to do the job. I had to take a course. 
and I had to take a course at the most expensive and famous university in the world. McDonald's has their own university. And it is so exclusive and expensive. It's in Chicago, Illinois, and it's called Hamburger University. <laughs> it really is. Now, why is it the most expensive university in the world? I'll tell you why. You need to own a McDonald's franchise to go to the university. Can anybody guess how much it costs for a McDonald's franchise? Raise your hand if you have an idea what it costs for a McDonald's franchise. What do you think for a McDonald's franchise? 1.5 million. Any other guesses? Two million. Two million. One point seven. Ten million. Ten million. Okay. So you know what? You're going to be really surprised to know that the cost for a franchise is only forty-five thousand dollars. I know. I thought that too. Except you need to have at least one to two point two million dollars to put towards it, and at least seven hundred and fifty thousand in cash. So it is pretty expensive to own a McDonald's. Now, when you go to Hamburg University you're gonna be spending a full-time job over the next two years learning how to operate your franchise. You're gonna be learning the McDonald's systems. And once again, we're gonna be talking about systems today because systems is what it was all about. I learned from the best university, the best systems. They have systems. They have great systems. They have a training manual. This is actually a picture of the training manual that was used back in the 80s when you owned a McDonald's restaurant. So imagine spending 40 hours a week for two years to learn how to operate your McDonald's, learning all the systems. And what was the motivation? If you didn't pass the course, you didn't get your McDonald's. So wow, that, that's pretty strong motivation. Now, the one thing about McDonald's systems is that their systems even went into their media advertising back in the 80s. Everybody knows what a Big Mac is? Who can tell me, raise your hand, if you can tell me what is in a Big Mac? Who, <laughs> raise your hand if you know what somebody say. What's in a Big Mac? Two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. It was ingrained in us in the 80s and 90s on commercials. Now, why is a Big Mac the same in Vancouver as it is in Tokyo, as it is in England, as it is in Australia? Why? Mark, why? Fast food with a system. They have a system. It's always the same. So the founder of McDonald's, this is Ray Kroc. And he, owned the, he started the McDonald's franchise in 1955. And it was a big success. Now, here you can see the key to success is being in the right place at the right time and recognizing that you are there and taking action. The McDonald's brothers didn't take action. Ray Kroc took action. One of our slogans in our company is action supersedes everything. I think Dennis even has a T-shirt that says that. Now. What people don't realize is that the money was not in hamburgers. The money in McDonald's is in real estate. And McDonald's worldwide real estate holdings exceed $30 billion. Ray Kroc recognized it was more important to own the land that the McDonald's franchises were located on. And a lot of people don't realize that. So. I had to learn a system. So not only did I go to Hamburg University in Chicago, Illinois, I to learn the McDonald's system, I had to learn the system of how to put my best face forward. What I'm sharing you with right now is the actual guide that we were given that very few people outside the McDonald's community have ever seen. Less than 1,000 people have ever portrayed the role of Ronald McDonald. And we had to make every single one of us look the same even though at any one time around the world, there was about 200 of us that were wearing the suit. We had to have tools. The system was simple. It was a 19 step system and they gave us the tools that we needed. These tools helped us go looking like this and putting on the stuff and the red mouth to eventually looking like that. I had to go from step one 
to step 19. It's like a recipe to make a pie or to make a Big Mac or to build your business. You need to start at step one and then go to step 19. I couldn't start at step 19 and mix up the steps. I had to follow the recipe so that I looked like this. That's, that's a photo of me in 1991 dressed up uh, in the outfit as I learned the system. Now, why do I share about systems? Why are systems so important? Well, I was into magic and every magic trick is a system. And I use the systems that I learned from McDonald's to start my own magic shop. And the same idea happened. If I was to perform a magic trick, I needed to know the start, the middle, the end. And if I got any of that wrong, the end result was dismal failure. So I owned a magic shop back in that time. This, this is a photo of my magic shop back in the 90s in Langley, British Columbia. Then I got involved in the industry of multi-level marketing. Raise your hand if the words, letters MLM makes you want to run out the door right now screaming. <laughs> exactly. Because that's what I did. I sat in the back of a room in the mid-90s like this. I don't want to get involved in one of those things. But I saw the concept of leverage for the first time. And I understand, back in this time, I was making over $100,000 a year as Ronald McDonald, as a kindergarten teacher, as a magic shop owner, and a magician. But I didn't have any time. So I got involved in the industry of network marketing. My very first company was a company here in Vancouver called NATO. No, not the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, uh, but it was uh, a network marketing company, the Networking Alliance for Today's Opportunities with an oil conditioner. And this is where I cut my teeth and got really excited about the industry of network marketing 25 years ago. And I met my now business partner back then, a uh, really good friend, Dennis Wilson. We met in this company. We then together uh, got involved in a new company called World Games. And this is the first time that I made over a million dollars a year as a distributor in a network marketing company uh, with an online gambling casino with stock market game. That transformed to me starting my own company and having Dennis as my coach. I bought his software and he was my coach and he was my mentor to be able to be able to take my network marketing business into now a career and an owner. And in my first year, did over $10 million in sales, got that business up to $4 million a month in sales. And my coach said, Craig, don't do it. This slide is only to share with you the money I blew because I did not listen to my coach. Just as an idea, raise your hand if you're a coach or something, and, and, or you've had a coach or used a coach. Just have an idea. There's quite a few people. Thank you. That's great. My coach was Dennis. And I said to Dennis, I have an idea. I want to do a business presentation and I want to be a cartoon character. And he went, Craig, that's a stupid idea. I said, but your software, your guys can make it for me, right? Yes, they can. How much is that going to cost, Dennis? He goes, $25,000. I said, sold. He goes, damn. <laughs> I should have charged you more. I said, I still would have paid it. So this is my $25,000 photo because <laughs> it didn't make me any money. But yes, I was a cartoon character. Listen to your coaches, people. You know, this is really important. Coaches and mentors are important because they've done things. They know it works. And the great thing about having Dennis as a coach and a mentor is he told me the things that I didn't want to hear. And when I listened to my coach, I made money. When I didn't listen to my coach, I spent foolish money. But Dennis, I'm still a cartoon, okay? I still have, I still have that. <laughs> After that, we took all that we learned from these industries and we started our own company in the gift with purchase and incentive programs. Uh, the car business, you see a lot. Buy a car, get a free cruise. We took the incentives that we were using in Vacation Hits and created our own company called Quinden. Now, Quinden was really simple. Uh, I'm the Quinn, Pello Quinn, and he's the Den, Dennis, and we put it together and we made Quinden. And we did uh, promotions with some big names. Uh, Macy's. Anybody, raise your hand if you've heard of Macy's, Dockers, Big O Tires. Uh, these companies, we did millions of dollars of sales uh, with these companies in incentive programs. Macy's was a simple one. On Father's Day, go into Macy's, spend $100 on Dockers menswear, and you would get a free Sirius XM radio. We put these promotions together. We learned a lot uh, about sales and promotions with this company. This led me to my next career in corporate management with a company called Glissandra. 
Uncle Sonder was an anti-aging skincare and supplement company. And we put together promotions uh, over the years with our knowledge to get them uh, more sales throughout North America. Then I joined a company, uh, once again, in corporate management as the business development manager for a multi-million dollar direct selling company, 35-year-old Sunrider. And this is the company that I was with when I wrote my book. And a lot of the things of my book that I wrote and, and tested was on Sunrider distributors, helping them learn my LinkedIn system, which ultimately led to me writing my book. Uh, with the help of friends here in the audience who want to write a book, make sure you talk to Joel. <laughs> so we have a dream too at Small Business Dream. Our dream is to help small business owners be profitable in this new Amazon era of marketing and sales. So why would you want to have Small Business Dream? Well, small business owners struggle and they struggle to find profitability. Small business owners also struggle to find new customers to increase sales. Raise your hand if you own a small business or have a home business. So I get an idea. That's fantastic. Keep your hand up there. Keep it up. Keep your hand up. Do if you have trouble getting new customers or like to learn a way to get more customers to your business. Okay. You're going to love small business dream. Okay. We worked with many small businesses because we knew that the number one thing they were missing, they were missing a system. Well, if we go back a little bit, I learned systems from the best. So we turned the systems so that small businesses could be able to succeed. So I came up with six solutions to increase the profits for your small business. So we're going to talk about six simple ways to profitability today. We're going to first of all talk about how to profit from networking events like we're at right now. We're then going to also talk about sales vacancy and how to eliminate it. We're going to then talk about increasing customer purchase frequency, having your customers purchase over and over again. We're going to talk about follow-up, which a lot of people fail at. We're going to talk about automation for sales and marketing. And I'm going to share from my book some secrets about how to build your business using LinkedIn. So networking events. Raise your hand if you'd rather eat dog food <laughs> than go to a networking event. It wasn't dog food that we had out here. That's okay. A lot of people don't like it. Here's the, here's the great news. You don't have to do it forever. But there's some advantages to going frequently to events like we're at today. Now, the better news is you don't need to try to sell at these events. The whole idea at these events is to make friends first. And you can just do a few events and start crushing it in a very short period of time to be more and more effective at meeting people. It's about making connections. So let me talk to you about something that everybody got when you came here today. Uh, you got a bunker ring. And Dennis has explained that a little bit. And let me talk about Dennis and the bunker rings. So Dennis got to be known as the bunker ring guy. He was the ring guy. He would go, you go to an event and he talked to you. And if you gave him your business card and he scanned his business card into his app, he would give you a ring to put on the back of your phone. Now, at the first event, Dennis gave away a couple of bunker rings. Then he went to the next event and he got known as, hey, you got to go see Dennis and give him your business card and you can get one of these cool things because people would say, what's that on the back of your phone? Say, oh, you got to go see Dennis. Well, it started off, Dennis was the ring guy. Then because of Dennis's app and what he was doing, Dennis got to be known as the small business guru. So it was a simple little thing that he handed out. People got to know him for that. He always had one in his pocket. And that's how you get to be noticed at a networking event. Just always be there. Continue to go and do it. He made friends first. He didn't try to sell them anything. He said, give me your business card. I'll give you one of these things for your phones. And if you go to the local store, they, they, you can buy them. They're, they're for sale at most little uh, uh, shops that sell cell phone accessories. They're about 20 bucks. You go buy one. Or you could give Dennis your business card or show up to an event like this and have one on the back of your phone. So let's talk about why it's so important to be a connector. Dennis also learned when he was at these events that the best way was to learn what people did so he could connect one person with another person. Why are we at this event today? We want to learn what other people are doing and see how we can help connections. And we'll get into a lot of connections on LinkedIn and why LinkedIn is so important on connections. So you connect with people that benefit from each other. It's really, really important to make connections and understand that. 
So here's a profit, write this down, profitability tip. Remember relevant details about people at every networking event you go. You want to know who does what so you can connect people together. People will come to you because you're the connector. They'll be able to come to you and say, Mark, I know you are going to know somebody here. Dennis, you're going to know somebody here. You know, who do I go to? You know, Brent knows this person. You know, I go to Chris because Chris is going to know this person. You want to be that go-to person that people come to at a networking event. You also, write this down, need to be amazing at follow-up. How many people, raise your hand, if you are amazing at follow-up, you're the best person. How come nobody ever raises their hand when I ask this question? <laughs> oh, there we go. Roger's great at follow-up. We had one person raise their hand. Follow-up is so important. What's the best way to follow up? Get somebody's business card. Raise your hand if you collect business cards at any event you're here. Raise your hand if you actually collected a business card today. Raise your hand so I know, you collected a business card. Fantastic. And most of you are gonna go home with a stack of business cards like you see right there, and you're gonna have to follow up, and you can do that manually. You can put them into a, a database, or you can put them into an auto uh, email responder program. You can put them into something to be able to send out to them. You can personally send them a text message. You can give them a phone call. You've got their card. Or you're going to find out some ways that you can do it automatically with a system like Small Business Dream. Now, we talked about how important it was at networking events to connect with people, get business cards, be a connector, and remember what people do. Who can tell me, raise your hand if you can tell me, what is sales vacancy? Who has an idea? What is sales vacancy? If you know what that is, if you don't, that's fine. What, what, an empty room, sales vacancy. Yes, in your case, you have, a, you have a hotel. An empty room is sales vacancy. Very, very good. So let's get an idea of other things that are a restaurant, a beauty salon, uh, or an airplane with empty seats. Exactly. A hotel with empty rooms. Thank you, Claire. And an accounting firm that has staff without client files to work on. This is sales vacancy. Now, how do you eliminate sales vacancy? It's really interesting. A restaurant can email their customers with a time-limited offer. A tire shop can email at a discount when the temperature drops to, say, 10 degrees uh, here in Vancouver, and it's going to start to get to the point of snowing to get your snow tires put on your car. Maybe you're a hair salon, and you're going to email a customer with a special. We'll go into more about um, uh, hair salons, and, and I'll give you a story about an actual hair salon. Airline tickets. You know, airlines, when they've got empty seats, and that plane is ready to go, and, uh, go away, uh, and it's got empty seats, they can't be sold after the plane takes off. It costs the same amount of money for a plane to take off or a cruise ship, and that's called sales vacancy. So we're going to help eliminate sales vacancy by using our systems to be able to follow up and reach out to your customers. We're also gonna help by increasing purchase frequency. If you can get your existing customers to buy more or come more frequently, you're gonna be able to increase your profits. So let me talk about the idea of a hair salon. We helped the hair salon that was having difficulty increasing their sales. So we implemented some simple follow-up procedures where as soon as they finished the next day after getting their hair cut, they got an email thanking them for coming out to the hair salon. It sounds so small, but it was so significant because it kept them top of mind. And then two weeks later, another email went out automatically by the system to tell them, hey, two weeks ago you were in, we've got a special on shampoo. And highlighted some shampoos. Maybe you want to be thinking about your next booking. And then at the one month mark, one month, another email went out. You know what? It was a month ago you had your hair done. You haven't booked an appointment yet. Maybe you should give us a call and do that. At the six week mark, another email came out. Same idea. Look, you're due for a haircut. And at the eight week mark, it went, what happened? What did we do wrong? You didn't come in. Did you go somewhere else and an incentive for them to come back at a discount and to say, look, phone us. What did we do wrong not to get your business? And we increased the sales by doing this with a push notifying the next day, thank you, two-week product offer, four-week reminder, six-week time to book, eight-week, sorry, here's the discount. 
We increased their revenue by 30% by just getting one extra appointment a month from each of their customers. That's all it takes to increase the revenues. So raise your hand if you dream there was a button that you could push to almost immediately increase your profitability. Fantastic. This is the same button that we're going to share. We just created, and you saw from Dennis earlier, an app. And we're going to share that app with you. So if you connect with me, and I'm going to show you how to connect with everybody in the room very shortly. You connect with me or connect with Dennis. We will get you a, the first version of this button for free for your smartphone so that you can have a button. Now, we've customized profitability programs for a lot of companies, restaurants, real estate agents, financial planners, mortgage brokers, coaches, authors, even carpet stores. Let me talk about a carpet store that we personally helped. Uh, you saw it earlier one, a company called End of the Roll. Raise your hand uh, if you've ever heard of End of the Roll. End of the Roll is a very large carpet chain here in Canada. Uh, they have over 55 locations across, uh, uh, across Canada. And one of their uh, stores that was not very profitable wanted some help and contacted us to help increase customer engagement and increase their sales and use the Small Business Dream app. So we implemented that. I actually went into the store and worked with the salespeople directly for several months engaging customers and doing things that people said wouldn't work. The owner of the business said, I don't want to know what you're doing because I'm probably going to say no. So just go in, do what needs to be done if you can increase the sales of our store by just 10%. That's all he was looking for. 10% increase in sales. Now understand in a store that can do three to $5 million a year, what a 10% increase means. So we went in, we did things that he said would not work. We asked customers when they came in before they left for their name and their email and their phone number because we would follow up with them with more information. And they got an email the next day thanking them for coming into the store with the salesperson's hours of when he would be in the store, contact information. Two days later, they get another email. You were in a couple of days ago. Have you made a decision? A week later, they got another email. Hey, it was a week ago. You haven't come back yet. Did you go somewhere else? Have you got samples from another carpet store? Come and bring those samples in. Let me see if we can find something comparable in our store. Two weeks later was the magic email at two weeks. Hey, two weeks ago you came in. And then we started seeing customers coming back in saying, who is the person sending me all these emails? And all the salespeople would duck for cover. <laughs> And they would go, because I'm here to buy. Because <laughs> they were the only person that followed up. Now, Dennis being the coach and that we said, look, you need to put in a three-month follow-up email and a six-month follow-up email. And the owner of the store said, that's crazy. If they don't buy within two weeks, they've gone somewhere else. They don't buy. Turns out not true. We added a three-month and a six-month follow-up. And apparently six months later, somebody came in. Okay, somebody's been emailing me. My project got stopped. I was going to do my basement. Now I got all my permits. I'm ready to go. And you're the only person that cared enough to follow up with me by email. And he made a $14,000 sale. And when you're a commission salesperson, that is a big difference. Well, we increased the store's profits in the first year by about 17%. And that was implementing some simple systems at the sales level. How would you like to be able to increase with really simple systems your sales? Raise your hand. Let me see, anybody? How many just are not gonna raise their hand no matter what tonight? Just so I know that, just to show you, okay. Just wanna make sure I know those people. So, how many of you think that follow-up does not apply to your business? Raise your hand if follow-up does not apply. Okay, that's good because, <laughs> uh, you know, if you raise your hands, you're in the wrong room. Okay, customer follow-up is key. Customer follow-up. This is what we talked about to make sure that you followed up on a transaction like I talked about with the carpet store or with a hair salon following up immediately after they came in. Really, really important. It can be a reminder to come back 
uh, if they have a, if you have a service. So we have somebody here in the car business after you sold the car to remind them to come back uh, in a few months for servicing, for tire rotation, for oil changes, all the things that you can do in your business. Imagine how important it is to follow up your customers or for training and support on your products and services after you've sold it to them so they understand how it works to, to cut down your support uh, at, your, uh, at, your, at your company. Prospect follow-up, this is where most people fail, okay? We don't fail to plan or uh, plan to fail. We fail to plan. We fail to follow up. This is the biggest problem that people have with connections and prospects. In this room, I guarantee you're going to meet somebody that could change the course of your business, but you won't follow up. I heard a story last week of somebody that bought some products from somebody at this meetup. Love the products, but was never followed up by the person that sold them the products for a second order, even though they were in love with the products. Can you imagine you've got a customer and you don't follow up? Anybody ever not followed up with a customer? Raise your hand if you've never followed up. Come on, I know it's hard to put your hand up. We've all, I have, I'm bad, we've done it. All right, so as we said in carpet stores, projects get delayed. Follow up with the prospect, three months, six months. I know Dennis has followed up with customers selling his software a year, two years. What's the longest amount, Dennis, that somebody with your follow up would have called you? 11 years. Now imagine having a phone. <laughs> so, so Dennis in the back is saying 11 years of follow up emails every year. Is your project ready? Dennis, can I ask you a question? Did it cost you any more money to add those extra follow-up emails into your series? <laughs> exactly. It's automated for a reason. Put them in. When we told the carpet store to add three months and six months, they said we were crazy. Yeah, crazy to give you more sales. That was terrible. Furniture stores. Have you ever gone into a furniture store and not bought something and had a salesperson follow up with you? Probably not. I never have. How about financial planners? If they don't buy right away, do they follow up? Sometimes. Real estate agents. After you bought a house, I'm gonna use this example. Dennis buys investment properties for rentals. And he was in the market to buy eight rental properties. His very first uh, person that sold him the property, his only rule was if my real estate agent follows up with me, I'll give him my next listing. He has eight different <laughs> real estate agents for eight different properties, and he told each and every one of them he was in the market to buy more than one property, and they didn't follow up. Or if they did follow up as a real estate agent, they sent him comparables in the area. Like, that's what Dennis was looking for. We have a way for real estate agents to follow up effectively. MLMers, okay, come on. How many people are involved in or know somebody in multi-level marketing? Raise your hand. Come on. This is great. Hey, I've been involved in this industry 25 years. It's a great industry. Horrible for follow-up. We all know this. We can admit when we do things wrong. Business networkers, it's the same. So I want to ask you a question right now. Who has more time in their schedule right now for more effective follow-up. Raise your hand if you have more time. Fantastic, you are definitely the exception to the rule. Probably only raising your hand because I've now got you in the habit of raising your hand. Most people don't have any time. For those that raised your hand, you're gonna love Small Business Dream. For those that didn't raise your hand, you're really gonna love what automation a Small Business Dream can do for you. Because sales and marketing automation is gonna give you your time back. Why is it gonna give you your time back? Because now we're gonna see that this has become very affordable. Before, automation was expensive. It's easier to use with some programs, difficult with others, and it's still very new and foreign to small business owners. I can tell you right now, the owner of the end of the role did not think he needed sales and marketing automation. The company had their own sales and marketing automation that was never used by any of the stores because it was complicated and it didn't work very well. It wasn't user friendly for the staff. It wasn't user friendly for the salespeople. You need that. So this is the key to great sales and marketing automation. So write this down. The key to great sales 
and marketing is that it goes undetected. Great sales automation must be indetectable. We go as far as to putting spelling mistakes in our email follow-ups. And we tell that to people that go, you're crazy. They're gonna think you can't spell. No, they're gonna think, we've gone as far as seeing, what does Siri autocorrect? And put that in a text message to somebody. Because then they're gonna think you actually took the time to send them a text message on the fly. How many of you have ever got an email message that was a beautiful HTML email with all these gorgeous pictures in it that actually meant anything to you that wasn't trying to sell you something. Exactly. The people that you're going to respond to or somebody that sends you a quick little message, you know, hey, Craig, it's Dennis. Give me a call. I got to talk to you right away. Send with a couple of spelling mistakes <laughs> with some letters reversed in it. You're like, he was in a real hurry. This makes sense, undetected. So how does automation save you time? For the obvious reasons that you can automate or semi-automate your email follow-up, meaning that semi-automation is the email doesn't go out right away. It gives you a chance to edit it, to add in specific details specific to your customer. It's gonna save you time in customer support. It can automate or semi-automate your social networking efforts. And I'm gonna go into that with my LinkedIn. And it can allow you to get more calls done in an hour if you're out there making phone calls uh, to clients and prospective clients. It all starts with data. This is really important. How many small business owners, raise your hand, if you collect data from your prospects and customers right now, raise your hand. Great if you do. Thank you very much for showing you do. I know many of you are thinking, this is ridiculous. Of course I have my data. But is your data in a usable format. Data needs to be something you can access, all right, and easily get to it. So where is your customer data right now? Is it in an accounting software? That's great, you have accounting software, but can you do an email blast out to all the people in your accounting software or a push notification? Do you have a CRM or sales automation software tool? I hope so. That's a, that's a really good way to be able to get your customer data. Or is all your data on paper? Is it on receipts or is it on POs or credit card uh, receipts or invoices or notes from your salespeople or just in your reservation book? Is it digital or is it written down? Now, if it's written down, we can help you with all these things. If you've got data, you're going to love what Small Business Dream can do for you. So write this down. You need your data to be in a usable data format. Really, really important, a usable data format. Now, how do you get customer data? What are the different ways to do it? When we were talking with the entire group here, I was over overwhelming the number one way that people got new customers and new data was from referrals. That's what I heard over and over again was referrals, right? So getting business cards at networking events is gonna help you get customer data. Uh, you can do a business card draw. Have you ever gone into a restaurant and seen a little fishbowl full of cards and there's a draw if you put your business card in for a free lunch or a free dinner or a gift card? Uh, special offers from your mailing list and you get something emailed out to you to get new subscribers. Uh, customer satisfaction survey. You may have seen this just on a little piece of paper. A restaurant puts a slip in with your bill. How was our server today? You can email and offer to follow up and information that are interested in. Look, I want to send you some stuff. That's what we did with end of the roll. Give me your name and your email so we can follow up with the warranty for the carpet that you were looking at. And you can even go into your old reservation books if you're in, a, in, in that type of business with a hotel and go back and grab all that data and enter it into a system. And you can use sales funnels. So what's a sales funnel? Uh, many of the events that I go to, people always talking about sales funnels. I hear people using the term sales funnels, but a lot of people don't understand what a sales funnel is. So, <coughs> thanks. A sales funnel is simply a sales process to go through some websites that'll answer some questions and take you through a process to sort and sift to end up with a customer. 
So it starts off where you are, somebody is unaware of your products or services or your company. That funnel is then gonna lead them to, into an actual lead or they're a suspect. You suspect they might be interested in what you're doing. Further down, they turn from a suspect into a prospect. They are interested by the way they answered the questions in your surveys and sales funnels, finally leading to a customer. That's a funnel. Now, most regular sales funnels stop here, but we have learned to go one step further and turn your sales funnel into a sales hourglass. It's what happens after you get a customer that is most important. So many times I hear in direct sales, everybody thinks that the sale is done, so the follow-up is done after the sale is complete. But especially in industries like network marketing, after the person is enrolled in your business, you've just started. So you need to learn about the sales hourglass. So the next thing that happens after you become a customer is you wanna get a repeat sale. You want them buying more and more. It is so much easier to keep a customer buying than it is to go and find a new customer. Yet many businesses forget about their existing customers. And the fan or advocate is somebody that is now using your products. And we already heard the number one way of getting new customers is through referrals. So happy customers telling their friends and family about your products. So you want to make sure that you don't stop at the customer, that you continue to get repeat sales and have them tell their friends. So let's assume that you have or you decide to create a sales funnel. Now, how are you going to get the right people to go to it? Well, that's where my LinkedIn systems comes into play. So LinkedIn needs to be done right. I see it done wrong all the time. This is the reason that I wrote the book. Now, I can tell you right now, my book is boring. It's a system, and it's got a lot of pictures and how to go through it, and I'm gonna go through the highlights here of some ways to simply engage with a new prospect on LinkedIn for free. So, you don't need to have a premium account. You just simply open up a free account on LinkedIn. If you haven't got one, I encourage you to do that. If you downloaded the app, I encourage you to do that as well. We're not gonna sell. The 80-20 rule applies on all social media platforms. 80% of what you're doing is making friends, you're not selling, 20% is selling. Have you, does anybody have a friend on Facebook that, that is constantly selling their products and services? Every single post is, you know, lose weight now, you know, take my products, they're so amazing, I'm thriving. I only say that because I have a sister that's doing that. I love her, but she hasn't read the book. <laughs> Make friends first. It's really, really important. Become an expert. Writing the book was not about making money selling the book. Understand that. When Dennis, Dennis, you've written three books. It wasn't the money that we make selling the books. It was becoming an expert in the field. And then you just need somebody like Joel to help you uh, write the book if you're not good at it. There's people in the room that can help you write your book. Connect with those people. And make good content. It doesn't need to be great content. It needs to be good content. I casually joke, you get credibility by just having your face on the cover of the book. This could be blank. <laughs> Nobody reads it but you're now a LinkedIn expert. So the ultimate way to sharpshoot and find ways to get more customers on LinkedIn. I'm gonna share with you how to do this. Remember, it's a matter of giving, not getting. All right, you're not out there to get people into your business. Remember that. You wanna be able to make mutually beneficial connections. Right, it's not an overnight success system. I am not promising you're gonna be rich tomorrow by using the system in my book. But I can tell you that in using it over thousands of people that have used my system in LinkedIn, I can teach you how to get a new customer every single month into your business in about an hour a day of effort. Raise your hand if one extra customer a month in an hour a day of effort would be worth uh, learning a little bit more about. All right, for free, not costing you any money. There we go, even better. Okay, so make friends first. So the very first thing you gotta do is you gotta log into LinkedIn. This is really simple, I'm gonna show you the process, and you're gonna create your profile. Your profile is very important on LinkedIn, all right? Your photograph should be professional. 
I think we had had photographers in the room. Uh, today we don't have, I don't have a videographer, um, but we don't have a photographer. But you want a professional photograph. You need to have a photo. But a bad photo of you, you know, in a really weird position, bad lighting, doesn't work on LinkedIn. Have a professional photo. It's not hard. Get a friend to take one. Make sure you update your profile. Network marketers, big tip. Put your company name in your profile. Don't hide and don't come up with cutesy little things like I'm a second income specialist and I'm a lifestyle engineer. Be proud of your company. Say what you do. Don't lie to people. There's this new concept. You might have heard of it. Anybody ever heard of Google? <laughs> They're going to Google and find out what you're doing eventually. Don't start off with a lie. Do not lie to people on LinkedIn about what you do. Be upfront. Be proud of it. Okay. Now, if you're going to connect with people, you want to search for people in your industry. So search for whatever you happen to be in with your company or products and your local city. Start local. It's easier to build local than it is to build global. So do that. Start close to home. If you're in a small city, go to the closest city, the big city around you and start doing that. In this case, if you're in, in a health or wellness business, search for health and Vancouver. And you can see there's 19,000 results. 19,000 people on LinkedIn when I did this have health and Vancouver in their LinkedIn profile for free. That's a lot of, if you think you might be able to find somebody, now, do not just click the connect button. This is the wrong way to connect with somebody on LinkedIn. You need to go and open up their profile. So click on their name and you need to click the connect button this way. This is much more effective because it's gonna open up the little note button. You're gonna be able to add a customized note. People are more likely to accept your connection if you send them a custom note than if you just randomly go, connect, 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 connect. That's easy to do, but it's not successful. I've tried it, it doesn't work. Go find common skills, find people and what they have in common with you. So this is really easy when you make that custom message to them so you know. So make the secret note, don't sell. This is what I do and it works every time. We're making connections. We're not gonna try to sell them in this first note. We just want to find a mutually beneficial connection. So you want to go through what you found out about them and create a customized note with a little bit about them. Don't spend too much time investigating them, a minute or two, and create a customized note. Now, if you're not willing to follow up or able to follow up with your connections right away, don't go out and connect with people. And I teach do 10 new requests a day. That's it. 10 a day. It's simple. You can do that in 10 minutes every morning over your first cup of coffee. Your response time is the most important part. How quickly you respond to somebody that connects with you. You're going to get an email response from LinkedIn. And if you've downloaded the app, you're going to get a push notification from LinkedIn saying that you have a new person that has accepted your connection. So let's talk about that and let me tell you about a really cool little secret. Everybody pull out their phones. There's one chance you get to use your phone in the middle of a networking event. Open up your LinkedIn app. If you have LinkedIn, go to LinkedIn right now and open up your app. Tell me when you've gone and done that. Open up your app right now. Once you've opened up your app, at the very bottom of your app, so when you've got it, raise, raise your hand so I know you've got it. Raise your hand up when you've got your LinkedIn app open. Fantastic. At the bottom of your app, there's a little two, two little heads. That's your connect. Click that button right there. So click that button. And now you're going to see in the middle, and you see up on the screen, you're going to see find nearby, and it will say off. Click that button. Now, everybody in this room is now connecting to you. And if you see the little button like this, that has the little person with a plus sign, click it, connect with them, invite them, invite them. Oh, look at all these people I'm inviting. This is fantastic. All these people that are coming in. If you see the little message button, like the one at the bottom, that means you're already connected. So you just send them a message. This is the fastest way to connect with every single person in the room, but it only works if you have the app and everybody has clicked that nearby button 
it will bring you up. Now you can connect with everybody in the event. Imagine how important that is. So if you've connected with me on LinkedIn, you send me a message or you send Dennis a message, connect with Dennis or connect with Tony. One of the three of us will have access to the button. If you want that free button app that Dennis shared earlier, send us a message in LinkedIn and say, send me a link to the free button app and we'll send you a link to the free button app as your little bonus for coming out today. If you're watching the video on YouTube, connect with me on LinkedIn and do the same thing. Ask for the button. I'll send you the button. All right. So that's as simple as it is. That's how fast you can connect with every single person in the room, but it only works when you're on that page. If I haven't connected with you uh, yet, connect with me and vice versa. And you're going to see everybody else is doing it. Now we're all friends. We're going to do it later and show you how it works. If it didn't work for you this time. Now, this is what you don't want to see. The screen of death. This is the worst thing you ever want to see. You're connecting with people and you get the screen that says, this is saying that you have reached your threshold of I don't know responses. That means you're connecting with people who are saying to LinkedIn, I don't know him. I don't know her. I don't know. This is bad. That means you're probably not using my system. You're probably going connect, 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 connect. You're not connecting with people that have anything in common with you. And now you're hearing all these beep, 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 beeps on people's phones, which is fine because the beep, beep, beeps are people connecting. That's fine. This is the one time where I don't mind hearing phones going off because I know you're doing the system. All right, really simple. You don't want to see this. So uh, they don't tell you what the number is. So nobody knows that their formula, but they have a percentage formula. I have over 6,000 connections on LinkedIn that I've done one person at a time, no automation, all the semi-automation using the Small Business Dream app and using my system. And so I never got the screen of death. Don't want to have that because if you get the screen of death and they ban you from connecting in order to connect with people on LinkedIn, you'll actually need to have their email address, which makes it almost impossible to connect with new people. So do it right. All right, now, somebody's accepted your connection. Yes, Mark? Just a quick question. Messaging, is there a limit on that? The question, the question is, is there a limit on messaging once you've connected with somebody? No, there is not a limit on messaging somebody that you're connected with. If you're not connected, you cannot message somebody unless you've upgraded and purchased premium. And then you're limited to the number of people that you can message with a premium account. I'm showing you how to do this with a free LinkedIn account. I've used both free and premium. Premium is quite expensive and it's worth it for some people that, are, that want the extra uh, visibility that you get. But what I'm showing you is how to do it with a free account. So once somebody's accepted your connection, you're gonna be notified by email and you're gonna be notified by push notification on the app that they've accepted your email or they've accepted your connection. Now, the key is to follow up within minutes, if at all possible. Now, I've been doing this for almost five years. I can tell you right now, if you wait days to message somebody that is connected with you, the chances and likelihood of them becoming a real prospect are pretty much zero. If you respond to somebody immediately within minutes or hours of them accepting your connection request, your probability of having a, a good connection increases a hundredfold. So once you've gone and seen that somebody is connected with you, you wanna now go and check their profile, find some information out about them, and you wanna send them a message. And you wanna take a little bit of time, like I said earlier, you wanna find out a bit about their background, what they've done, who they are, only spend about a minute or two maximum, and then send them a custom message. Thanks for connecting with me. I wanna make our, our connection mutually beneficial, a little bit about them customized and send it to create engagement. And then as soon as you've gone and made that message, what you wanna do is pick up the phone and do what nobody else is doing on LinkedIn. Call them. I know it sounds foreign, but if they have their phone number on LinkedIn, it means they're open to actually having a phone call. Pick up the phone and make a phone call, but make a friend first. You're not selling them anything. You're picking up the phone to say hi. 
I want to be your friend. Right. Now you're also going to wait for them to respond to you on LinkedIn. And the idea here is to get an ongoing rapport with LinkedIn and getting somebody from a connection to a suspect, to a prospect, to possibly being a customer or making referrals for you. If you follow my system, this is what you'll get. And I've seen if you do 10 people a day for a month, that's 300 people that you would attempt to connect with. You will probably connect with about 75 of those people will accept your connection request, about 25%. Of which out of that, only about 25% will engage with you, of which only 25% will actually get to the point where you're gonna have a conversation and you'll get one or two customers in an hour a day. That's it. Sometimes you'll get zero, sometimes you'll get four. But on average, what I've seen on the system, if you connect with 10 people a day and do the follow-up, you'll get a new customer every single month in your business. Follow-up is so important. Now, I know this sounds hard, but that's where a system is absolutely crucial to be able to follow up and do that. Small Business Dream has been designed to follow up in LinkedIn with my system and Dennis created the app with my system in mind so that you could follow up effectively. It's about keeping it engaged. A regular email autoresponder will not work for my LinkedIn system. You can do it manually for about the first week with just an Excel spreadsheet and maybe your own Gmail account. But after that, you're gonna need some help because you're gonna get lost in the follow-up. Semi-automated is key and having a system that'll allow you to customize the messages so it doesn't look robotic is what is, is key to making this work. You're gonna create different series where you're gonna be able to have a series to connect with them before they're a customer, so ask them to connect, then you're gonna follow up with them to make a friend, and then you're gonna follow up with them to turn them into a customer. And the best part with Small Business Dream uh, is that you can use this with any social media platform. I prefer LinkedIn as the, as the platform of choice. So just to summarize, we're gonna increase our sales by collecting and data. So data is really, really important. And we're gonna also uh, collect new data by using websites and sales funnels. Really, really important. We're gonna organize our data using some software automation. It's really, really important to be organized. And we're gonna save time by using the software correctly. And we're gonna prospect with respect using social media. So important to be the person that people wanna connect with, not the ones where they disconnect from you right away. If you read my book, Dennis, thank you. The question is, can't I just send them a whole big, huge response? And you'll see some responses in my book that show, uh, if you've been on LinkedIn, just show a hands again, how many people are using LinkedIn? Just so I have an idea, how many are using LinkedIn? Great. You've probably seen when somebody responds to you, as soon as you connect with about an arm's length message of every single website that you need to go to and go watch this video and do this, and they shove a whole bunch of information hoping that you're gonna be interested. They don't even try to make friends first. Dennis wrote a really good article uh, comparing social media to online dating. And, uh, and it's so true if you think about uh, social media that way. If you're on an online dating site, you're not immediately saying, you know, your place or mine. Well, maybe you are and you're on a different dating site. But if you're really looking for somebody, you're gonna have to make friends first, go for a cup of coffee, hold hands, and do the same thing in social media. Make friends first and do that. Don't go for the sale right at the beginning. It never works. So let me explain why Small Business Dream can do all of this for you. Wouldn't it be great if you had a button? Raise your hand if you'd like to have a button that could do everything that I just shared with you in the last 50 minutes. That'd be great. This is <laughs> One button does a lot of different things, doesn't it? It's a pretty special button. So business card transcriptions. We talked about having all that thing of business cards. At the end of the day, you got a big stack of business cards. Now you've got to go and enter them in yourself. Wouldn't it be great if there was a button that you could push, take a picture of a business card, and it would automatically go into your database and send out the first email? Small Business Dream has that button. We've got sales funnels and websites for you. We've got a contact manager for you in this. We have survey data collection, everything you need. Your data needs to be in a usable format, it's now in a usable format. We have automated email follow-up and autoresponders. 
and push notifications. And the complete LinkedIn campaign system is built into the Small Business Dream app. So all the stuff I talked about on LinkedIn can be automated and semi-automated for you. And we also give you a listing in our Business Finder app. And there's some people in here. This is our Business Finder app. Uh, hey, Tony, there's Tony, the Tony Taylor coach. And there's Claire's Boutique Hotel. And as you can see, if you're looking for a place in Ladner just to go have a nice evening with somebody special or not, uh, Claire's Boutique Hotel is in the app. So you also get a listing. And people are downloading our app every day to find local small businesses that are offering deals and discounts to be able to connect. And now here's a whole nother way to network with people because these small businesses network with each other and make deals and cross promotions, a great way to be able to build your business. So now you're probably asking how much for all this? Well, the do it yourself basic package is only $499 a year. That's it. And it gives you everything that you heard about for a small business with a small number of contacts. If you're a little bit, you're a medium size to a larger business, you got a lot more contacts, you'll probably quickly upgrade or get the professional version, which is more connections, more push notifications, uh, a larger number of sales funnels and more that you'll need to build your business. And if you're the type of person that doesn't want to do it yourself and you want it done for you, you can have our experts do everything that I just explained and build that all for you on your website, build your funnels, help with your data collection, set it all up, all your email autoresponders. We can, we can do it for you, which is $49.99 for the first year, and you get access to somebody building it so you don't have to do it yourself. So what you're gonna get, the basic package, as you can see here, is gonna give you everything that we talked about for a small business. If you open up the sheet that you have, we put one on here. All the information is on the sheet that we had on your, on your chair when you came in for the basic package of what you get. The professional package is the same as the basic, do it yourself, but more volume, more contacts, more transcription services. And for the corporate person that really wants to have a big, uh, to do it and have us do it for you and get the professional uh, help and have writers and have people help with the videos and people help with your sales funnels, we can do that for you as well. My name is Greg Peliquin. This is my information. Make sure you connect with me on LinkedIn. Connect with me afterwards. I do appreciate you all coming out and taking a, an hour out of your evening to learn how you can increase your profits. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining me and thank you, Roger, for uh, inviting me out to the Vancouver Business Network. Thanks, everyone. That's more than my little mind can absorb in an hour. BBN, thank you very much. Thank you. Are you stay here?